to every single one of you from all over the world because I've been watching our numbers from the United States, from Mexico, from the UK, from Switzerland. All of y'all, welcome back to the Next Gen Profits Podcast. We are your spiritual parents. Craig. And Colette Toach. Whoo, guys, I am both excited and pumped and full of power to share today's message because mm-hmm. while well, I've been deep in study for a lot of different reasons, tomorrow is the official launch date of our apostolic mentorship program. And I'm nervous. I'm yes. excited. God has been downloading so much revelation to me on the apostolic types. And as I do that, I recognize how important the place of the prophet is mm. within the apostolic team. Yes. I'm going to be Uh, teaching the apostles not just how to recognize their apostolic type and mandate, but also how to work with their team. Mm. And if it wasn't for all of you guys out there who've trained me so well over the last (laughs) 25 years, I wouldn't be able to give them all the shortcuts, what to avoid, what to do, because my intention is to help these apostles Mm. understand y'all crazy prophets so that they can learn to work with you, not to worry. We'll have a prophetic mentorship program at the end of the year for you guys to learn to connect with your apostles. However, if you are in a place where you are working alongside an apostle, I do recommend that if there are any tickets available, that you please jump in and get one and study alongside in the self-study version of our program, Mm. because it'll give you a bit of an insight of where your apostle is coming from. Don't be caught unawares. Come Mm -hmm. on, prophets. So far, every single podcast has been this. We're here to sharpen your sword. Mm -hmm. We're here to accelerate you. It's time to build. And Mm. that means studying. It means putting yourself in a position to grow. So Mm. if God has pulled you out of the wilderness, you're working with a pastor who you feel is going to become an apostle, or you're already with an apostle, you should be on this program to Mm. get a head start. Mm. And if you have a good relationship with your pastor or an apostle, please do send them that link Mm. and make sure they get going because God has opened the door for the apostolic in the body of Christ. Whether we like it, believe in it or not, guys, it's just here. So Mm. let's get ready. Let's get ahead of the curve as God does something with his body. Now today, Craig and I are going to continue equipping you with the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to talk about Mm -hmm. the gift of prophecy. And it's so much in line with that introduction I just gave you. But before I jump into how you can use the gift of prophecy to usher in this apostolic movement, I'm going to send you to two different places. The one URL you know. And all my regular listeners, can you quote this with me? <laughs> Next gen. Prophets.org. O-R-G. We couldn't get the dot com. You know my sad story. Just Prophets.org. <laughs> next gen. Prophets.org. Okay. And if you anybody ever gets hold of the guy that's got the next gen Prophets.com who's not using that website, tell him we're looking for it. We mm-hmm. need it. Answer our emails. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. If you are interested in the Apostolic Mentorship Program, it's a very easy URL to remember. MyApostolicMentor.com. Everything's in the notes below, all the information you could need. But I want to get onto the good stuff. Mm-hmm. They prophets, is, they want to hear. They want to hear the good stuff. Let's draw out the potential in you today. 1 Corinthians 14, 24. But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an unformed person comes in, he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Mm. Now, it's nothing new that we can use the gift of prophecy Mm -hmm. in evangelism, which is a perfect example of in the word. But we can use it so much more than we are prophets. Yes. God wants to do more than just inform people of Mm. stuff. Yes. And I have to, it's like, I feel like the prophetic word has become of an FYI. Oh, by the way. This is what God thinks about you. Oh, by the way, this is where you have a blockage. Oh, by the way, this is the plan for your future. But this is the part that we miss. He will worship God and report that God is truly among you. When we're done prophesying, it should connect the hearer to God. Mm. Do you notice that this is, and he will worship the prophet? Does it say that though? Mm. Does it though? It doesn't. It says he will worship God. And prophecy has become a bit more, he shall worship the prophet. Mm. And we're missing it if that's happening every time you prophesy. You see, when I give you a prophetic word, I'm really not trying to give you something smart and grand. I'm trying to get you to connect with Jesus because he wants to connect with you. Mm. 
Now, we've already taught you this week about connection and how you can pick up your phone and have Jesus on speed dial. Mm. Prophet, if you haven't done Tuesday and Wednesday, Mm -hmm. please do rewind. Go back to Tuesday and Wednesday Mm. because you don't qualify to connect people with Jesus if you Mm. don't know how to connect with Jesus yourself. Those words you just said, Colette, people think that prophecy is an FYI made me cringe because I think of the Old Testament. When the prophet came into town and he gave a prophetic word, people were in fear and trembling Mm. because when God spoke, it was a commandment that they needed to follow. And I look at that and I say, where where have we gone that in the Old Testament, people were fearing the prophet coming to town because the word would be spoken to, it's an FYI, and if I feel like it, I might get round to doing Mm. it. And I have to look and say, prophets, we failed in allowing too much of ourselves to be in the prophetic words we speak. And that's why I love what Colette said yesterday and what we've been trying to tell you this week is that filter out the junk so that when you speak, you speak God and Him only. Because that relationship that needs to be built needs to be one of fear and trembling because He is Almighty God. And because of that, they will love Him even more so. Do you understand? It's like I respect God the Father so much that when He shows His love, it is even more powerful to me. I I, I receive it and love it even more because of who He is and what He is capable of. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about the woman at the well. When Jesus, (laughs) He prophesied all over her, this is what you've done, this is what you did. And what is the first thing she did? Mm -hmm. She glorified God. She glorified God. But you can't bring about that kind of reaction if you haven't learned to glorify God first. If you haven't glorified God in your prayer closet, if you haven't prayed it through in tongues Mm -hmm. and interpreted like we've been teaching you this week, then you're going to lack this one word, authority. Craig, when you were speaking about the weight of the Old Testament prophecies and the flamboyance in comparison Mm -hmm. of the prophecies we hear today. It does make me stop and take stock of the words on my mouth Mm. because am I just throwing it out for the sake of throwing it out? Mm -hmm. Look, being in the New Testament and being prophets, it's so easy for us. We sense the heart of God. We, we, feel his mind. We, we we understand things in the realm of the spirit that perhaps others in the body of Christ don't. And as a result, we're so quick to open our mouths with those impressions, with those thoughts. But have we stopped for a moment to see what happens after the prophetic word leaves our mouth? Once we're done prophesying and sharing that word from the Lord, oh, yes. do they fall to their knees mm. in repentance or do they raise their hands in worship? Mm. You know, there is nothing more beautiful that when you're done prophesying, you look up at the person you're prophesying to and tears are streaming down their face. And you know, it's very possible they didn't hear the last five Mm -mm. minutes of your prophetic word because in five minutes, they made a connection with the Lord Jesus for themselves. And Mm. nothing else you said after that just made any impact. And Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for it because it was never about how profound the words were. Mm -hmm. It was always about helping them make a connection. Guys, why do you think prophets prophesy more than most? Mm -hmm. Why? Because prophecy is meant to connect God's people to him. And who should be most connected to the heart of Christ? Should it not be the prophet? Should we not already have made that that beautiful, intimate Mm -hmm. connection with him? Now it's time to take what you received in your prayer closet and to impart that to the rest of the body of Christ. Mm. Guys, this right here is the true DNA of a next-gen prophet. Yes. I love the heart that you're speaking here, Colette, because how can I introduce somebody I don't know? Mm. And that is the core of what we're trying to do here, guys. We have gone through so much rejection. We've gone through so much pain. We've been at a point where it's like, Jesus was the only answer. And so we went there and we developed this relationship oh. in the quiet, we've de- in the secret place. And we, we got our hurts healed. Mm. We got a different focus because Jesus was able to impart into us. And it's like, now we need to go and do that to somebody else. You know, I loved coming to know the Lord because I walked into a family who were spirit-filled, prophets, you name it. And I, for the first time, saw that missing piece that I always wanted. And it's like, you could do that for somebody else. You can open the door to a face-to-face relationship with Jesus that will transform their life. Mm. 
But you know, a lot of prophets don't make that step. I should mm-hmm. know we, we've got a school full. <laughs> I love every single one of my students, but I have to challenge them sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, hey, guys, you so caught up in your process, your templates, your triggers, exactly. your hurts, your pain, your stuff, your connection with Jesus, that you don't realize that that's just the first step. Yes, yes those things draw us into the throne room, but then you need to make the connection. Mm-hmm. Then you need to build, but from there you need to expand. Thank and that you. means taking all that healing, taking all that experience and helping others into it. But if all we do is sit in our little secret place and never take the light mm. out to the rest of the world, we're failing in our mandate as yes. prophets. Amen. Guys, if you are not connecting others to Jesus so that they experience him, listen, I, I just really need, I need you to, to catch this, guys. Think of me speaking to you as your spiritual mom right now Mm -hmm. because I'm trying to help you be a prophet right now. Not just prophesy, okay? Oof. It's like this. So you have this prophetic word that you give someone. um, The Lord's going to do it for you. Or the Lord's going to give you this and the Lord's going to give you that. That's an FYI. Mm-hmm. That's an FYI. You're not helping them make connection. Can, okay, I need to go back to the scripture so that you really grasp it. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. Mm. <laughs> and so falling down on his face, he will worship God. Okay. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. That's prophecy. That's mm-hmm. prophecy. The secrets of the heart have to be revealed. If you want somebody... To make a connection with Jesus, you need to take them through the same experience you went through. What experience did you go through? Jesus touched your heart. Mm. Jesus revealed the secrets of your heart. He connected with you on such a Mm -hmm. deep and intimate level that no other human being ever did before. And what did you do when he did that? You fell on your face and you wept before him and you let him hold you. Mm -hmm. And that's what his people need. That's why you went through that process, to impart this to them. Yes. And you're not going to impart them to them by saying, yes, you should marry this person. And no, you shouldn't go through that door. <laughs> Look, that's great to give people direction. And, and I'm not knocking directional prophecy. No. But I'm saying, are you fulfilling your mandate? Because yes. anybody in the body of Christ can prophesy. Let Thank them you. go to somebody else to get a prophetic word of yeah. direction. <laughs> but you, prophet, yes. you have a mandate to fulfill. And that mandate is to connect hearts. So when you're prophesying, your prophecy needs to reveal what's in their heart. Mm. Stop for a second. Just stop with me for a second. I want you to think of the last impressions, prophecies, Mm. or any spiritual direction you gave anyone. Did any of it reveal their heart? Mm. You see, because as prophets, we often think that all we need to reveal in prophetic words is God's will. Yes. But that's not what the scripture tells me. The scripture tells me that prophecy reveals the heart of man yes. and then imparts the will mm. of God. And together, we connect the two. Oh, come on, guys. I hope you feel the love of the Lord on that. And I want to encourage you to step out and go to that next level because you can give words of edification all over the place. You can tell people about what the Lord wants to give them, but it's a step of faith to get a prophetic word that's going to go deep and touch their heart. And, you know, we don't want to hurt people. We don't want to look like a fool and all that stuff. But then we're looking at ourselves. This is not about looking at ourselves. It's Mm. about looking at the person and allowing the Lord to speak to them. And that is a step of faith. Yes. It's a step of faith, just like you did in the previous one, where I said, are you vulnerable enough to speak to the Lord in your hurts, in your anger and everything else? Well, are you vulnerable enough to step out and to bless that person and to let Jesus speak to them through you as that weak vessel? Because that is the next step. That's the extension of how you're going to minister God's love to them. Guys, this is how we are going to participate in this apostolic move that God is bringing on the church Mm -hmm. by connecting the bride to Christ. Yes. It has to be a heart connection. Yes. And then it'll become a mind, emotions, and will connection. Mm. And then we really build. Mm. How about you challenge yourself a little bit? How about the next time you prophesy? I love what you said, Craig. Go deeper. Go deeper than I sense, I feel, I think. Mm -hmm. Why don't you really talk to their heart? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Talk to their heart that connects to Christ. You know, it's interesting. Um, every time you pray in a specific direction, you get revelation in that yes. direction, right? If you're praying for healing, you're going to get revelation about healing mm-hmm. or about demons that are blocking the healing. Same with finances. So if you pray deliberately looking at the condition of that person's heart, you're going to get revelation. And yes. then you do, as Craig said, it's a step of faith. Man, how many times did Jesus expose what was in someone's heart? This is what you were thinking. This is what you were feeling. This is what you were intending every single time. And when he said those things, the scripture I just read comes to life. Yes, It provoked them because he sees me. Mm -hmm. He knows me. He loves me. And when you achieve that, well then, prophet, you accomplish your mandate. Mm -hmm. We all accomplish our mandate together. Nextgenprofits.org. Guys, if you are listening to us for the first time, we want to know your name. Go there, get that little chat icon you see there at the bottom, chat to one of the team, let us know your name. Send in an email. Above all, get on our mailing list so we can stay in touch. We'll Mm -hmm. send you all the updates of our new podcasts and lots of other fun stuff that's happening in the Gazette. Nextgenprofits.org. We're here for you every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we're going to see you again next week, aren't we, Craig? We are. So with that being said, go share the love of Jesus to somebody. Minister to them. Prophesy and edify. Love you guys. See you next week.